this video, I'll be showing you how to remove and replace the dog bone, also known as the rear forward lateral link, on a 2002 Mitsubishi Lancer. I will not show you yesterday fully because it was snowing, I didn't really show my camera, so the part I'll be replacing is the new one, but I will remove and replace it in a way that you can see. Most of the time, you either have to cut it out if your car is rusty, much like mine, or you're going to have to use an inductive heater to at least heat up it and hope it comes free. What happens is this bolt here that spins tends to get locked up inside the bushing where it can't move. It's more like most people say it's steel welded or rust welded. And yes, that was the case for both of these. But I remind you at one time, the dog bone actually looked like this, but after hours and hours of work, actually it was more like 35, 40 minutes. I first started by cutting the actual dog bone itself and using an air chisel to split it open. That allowed me to pop it free using my pry bar. That left me with the actual sleeve of the bushing and the, um, and the pressed in portion of the bushing that it's into. So I also cut that at a 45 degree angle, bent one side up, cut around the bushing to pop that out. After all the parts were said and done, it left me with the actual inner sleeve of the bushing that had to be cut out. Also cut that at a 45 degree angle, used my air chisel to break it free. You would wanna be very careful because these are very, 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 very dangerous. And since the welded nut on the actual trailing arm is still intact, I was able to extract the bolt itself. I did mar the bolt up and it will not be reused. I do have other bolts, but because I have this bolt free, it means that I can put a new bolt in it. And because the welded nut is on the trailing arm, that's why I had to go through this whole process. I already took the wheel off, and I'm going to show you how to remove and replace the lower rear lateral link on a 2002 Mitsubishi Lancer. I said the new one is in there, but I'm going to show you how to remove and replace it. So we have a 17 on this side, a 17 millimeter cam eccentric cam bolt, as you can see by the cam on there. And we have the nut right here, which is also a 17 millimeter on the end of the shaft of this eccentric cam bolt. So I'm going to loosen and remove that from the vehicle. If yours is rusty like mine, you might have to do what I had to do. Yes! Yeah! Bonsai! Yay! Top one is free. On the back side, where this arm is, right here, I'm gonna cut this to break the the arm free because the bolt moves and then I'm going to cut the inner piece of the of the actual uh, sleeve that's held with the bushing and air chisel that. Unfortunately we're not going to cut the new one. Using a 17 millimeter I'm going to hook to the cam side. Using a 17 millimeter I'm going to also hook to the bolt side of the cam with my wrench. And this is just to hold it. There we go. I want to be careful to not lose the cam. Very unlikely that that will be ca the case. So this is the bolt. As you can see, it's slotted using a magnet. There we go. There's the cam. That's what holds this top portion in place. On this side. We've got this bolt and welded nut right here. As you can see, I was air chiseling it. That needs to be removed. Be careful because that wet nut on this side right here is welded. So removing that could be very difficult. I'm going to remove, loosen and remove this bolt and nut. I recommend spraying it down with penetrating oil uh, days in advance. Using a 17 millimeter socket.
I can loosen and remove the bolt. There we go. So, got the new bolt out. Oops. There's the bolt. And here's the link. Now I gotta reinstall it the way it was uh, taken out. I'm gonna bring it up and drive it in so it stays in place. There we go. So I'm gonna take the new bolt here and stick some anti-seize on it to kinda help keep it from corroding so quickly. You don't need a lot of it, but I wanna coat the shaft right here. It's my neighbor's car. Kind of cover up those areas. You don't want to pull this out multiple times because it'll expose those threads. I'm going to take it, take the bolt covered in anti seize. And drive it in. Ta da! I'm going to take just a little bit of anti seize and coat right here where the cam is, being careful not to get it on the threads, which I did. Stick the cam back on. There we go, making sure it's aligned. And I'm gonna press on the back side to bring the bolt through the cam. And then I'm gonna stick the nut back into place to hold it in place. You may have to use a wrench on the back side. I live in Michigan, so this is a normal thing for me. Now I'm gonna bring, go to the bottom side and do the same. So right here is the joint. I've got the bolt, and I'm gonna do the same thing with the anti-seize. I'm gonna coat the shaft before sliding it in. I'm just gonna coat right here, and just kinda work my way up to where this bolt is gonna sit. Kinda coating it with a nice layer of this anti-seize. Now that that layer of anti-seize has been put on, I'm going to slide it in. Okay, sweet. Watch out. See? I had to turn the cam so I could get this in there. There we go. Slide it right into place and tighten it down. There we go. Now I'm going to bring the car up to ride height and add some additional torques. So Loaded on the jack right here. I'm going to just snug this one down as well. I'm going to put it at zero degrees because this is your rear toe adjustment and uh, take it to the alignment shop. Reinstalled the wheel. Taking the rim. I'm just gonna lift it up. There we go. All right, there we go. And we're good for now. We can uh, torque these down and that's it. Because the rear toe is now put back on, the rear toe adjustment, we can see that I am driving, but the steering wheel is completely sideways. It's about 20 degrees in the wrong direction. So we're going to try and take that into the alignment shop and I'm going to probably, I'm actually probably going to do the alignment, honestly, to get this thing aligned. Just to show you the cars up on the alignment rack and previous measurements. Sweet. This is my angle. I'm looking at the screen as I am adjusting the cam bolt right here. 
unfortunately I can't do the other side because the other side's rustier than rust. You can see me kind of adjusting it right here. And then I'm looking at the screen. I'm at 0 0.14, which is almost on the mark. I want a little more. So now I'm at 0 0.19. And I have to bring it back a little bit. Right there. That's my rear toe and my rear camber. Now I'm just going to use the long reach, the extended length handle ratchet and give it a little bit of a snug to make sure everything's good and tight. Just as a reference, you want to always work from the back to the front. So when you're doing a alignment, you always want to work from the back, doing the camera and the toe first, if applicable, and then work your way to the front. Back is adjusted, I just got to work on the front here. So it's 20 degrees out. One of the perks of living in Michigan is seeing cars like that. Just to show you, my hand is off the wheel. We are going straight. Sweet. With the light touch of a finger, we turn. Well, how was that? I hope it wasn't too all over the place. I mean, it wasn't too difficult to change out the rear forward lateral link on my 2002 Mitsubishi Lancer. The only thing that I did have trouble with though is the fact that I had to cut it. Oh my gosh, did I have to cut it. But, I mean, the passenger rear lateral link is now replaced. I dare not touch the other side because I don't want to have to go through the process all over again. I hope you enjoyed that bonus footage as well of me aligning the car at the shop. Now, if you haven't already, don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. Check out my channel content for more, and hey, have fun.